In 1675, Olas Romer, a Danish astronomer at the Royal Observatory in Paris, observed an apparent delay in the eclipses of Jupiter's satellites and used it to estimate the velocity of light. In 1849, Armand Fizeau used a rotating wheel to measure the speed of light. He measured it both in air and in water. In 1850, another French physicist, Jean Foucault, did much the same. The inventor of the gyroscope, Foucault measured light's velocity with a rotating mirror. These experiments were quite advanced for the time. In fact, no one really did much better until the 20s rolled around, 1926 to be exact. In that year, Professor Albert A. Michelson accurately measured the time it took light to travel between two peaks above Los Angeles, Mount Wilson and Mount San Antonio. The two mountaintops are about 30 kilometers apart. It would take nearly one ten thousandth of a second for light to travel from one peak to the other. And that was long enough for Michelson to measure it with precision. 30 kilometers. About one ten thousandth of a second. Those were Michelson's components in measuring the speed of light. He reported that the speed of light is equal to 299,796 kilometers per second. That is almost exactly 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Why does the speed of light have that specific value? And why is it a fundamental constant of nature? No one really knows. But in the meantime, Scientists have only marginally improved upon Michelson's measurement of a fundamental constant that determines the scale of everything in the universe. The speed of light is one such fundamental constant. And the constant in Newton's law of gravity is another. For that reason alone, Newton might have strutted his entire lifetime as England's greatest scientist.